welcome everybody. Uh, um, excited to be back this week uh, after having our bye week. Uh, after three weeks, we just completed our first quarter of the season. We played three games, uh, non-conference games, and um, just really uh, excited to, to be starting our second quarter. Really grateful. Um, and to start it with a, non, uh, a conference game is really important for us uh, to go on the road and play well. Uh, we had a great week last week. We spent a lot of time uh, evaluating our first three games, doing a lot of self-scouting and um, really looking at areas where we could get better and improve. Um, you know, we've always tried to be a, have a growth mindset as a team and, uh, you know, take uh, one week to the next and try to find ways that we can get better as a football team. And that's going to be really important for us as we move into conference play this week. Um, Really spent uh, time at some physical practices last week. Uh, got a chance to scrimmage our young players, which was really important. Got a chance to see them go live Thursday. That was a lot of fun. And then the guys had a chance to have uh, this weekend off and watch other people play, and I thought that was important. Um, also, we got a chance to get out and recruit for the really the first time in over a year. We got a chance to get into high schools and be at games and. And so that was really important for, for our, our development as a program. Uh, a couple notes that I want to mention today. Um, we got some, uh, some bad news last week, end of last week, and I wanted to announce it today. Elijah Cooks is going to be done for the season. Uh, he suffered a, a Liz Frank foot injury in this last ball game, so we will not have Elijah. And then Tyson Williams... Uh, suffered a, a twisted knee in the game and he's going to be out for a couple of weeks uh and so um a jordan lee is going to be standing in for him so we're going to miss those guys uh they'll be out obviously for this game and and elijah moving forward the rest of the season you know cookie's been a great player for us just really tough tough luck uh you know last year he hurt his shoulder in the first game and then this year he's playing so well and so just, just feel for Cookie. And, uh, you know, he does have another year of eligibility, and that's something that he'll have to evaluate, and we'll talk about it. And we obviously would love to have him back. But, you know, at this time, we just feel for him. And, uh, uh, but we're, we're excited to get started, uh, to play on the road against a good Boise team, and looking forward to, uh, to this next challenge in this part of our season. Just uh, four games into Boise State season, I get a chance to watch them play against a Mountain West opponent. Uh, what are just thoughts on, on where their strengths are and this version of the Broncos? No, I just think they're I think they're very talented. Um, they're they're uh, very typical to you know the Boise teams that we played in 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 my four years now five being here. Very athletic in the secondary. Um, you know, experienced up front in their front seven on defense. They've, they've done a really good job of taking the ball away um, and, and creating turnovers. That's going to be extremely important in this game. And as we move through the conference, um, really are playing up-tempo offensively. Quarterbacks playing at a high level. Um, number two is one of the best skilled players in our league. And, uh, you know, they, they've made a lot of big plays offensively and so you know I'm impressed uh, with them as a team um, you know I just think uh, as we go through these conference games you know uh, playing playing without penalties is going to be so important um, eliminating your mistakes and taking care of the football really going to be important as we move through these conference games and you know I think for us we got to settle into to a style of play and and really continue to improve that style of play as we play week to week and you know uh, this is a one game season for us we're just looking at playing our very best football this week and concentrating on the things that we need to do to do that you mentioned the style of play I think people look at your quarterback and your wide receivers and they may say like why don't you guys just throw the ball 85 percent of the time why <laughs> is balance so important to you and getting this game going important for your offense well, I just think it's important. Uh, 
you know, we want to play with some physicality. I mean, I don't think there's any secret to that. And it, and uh, you can do that and throw the football as well. But at the same time, I just think there's a level of consistency you have to have in your play week in and week out. And and we, we you know, we haven't abandoned the run by any means. We just haven't been as effective as we need to be. And so, um, you know, we, we're focusing on some different things to to – really emphasize that working hard with our defense uh, as well and I just think it's going to be important especially as we go on the road you know play in tough environments that we're able to bring balance plus we got good we got good backs I mean uh, Toa is an excellent back Devante Avery we really like our backs and we want them to be involved in our attack so um, it's just about using the talent that we have and and spreading the ball to our playmakers and and uh, and really be more effective offensively. Coach, earlier you had brought up real quick uh, Khalil Shakir uh, for Boise State. Uh, from your time and travels and your coaching days, assistant, head coaching, does he remind you of anyone you've seen before? No, he's just a good – he's a good player. He's very talented. He's got ability to stretch the field. And uh, and they they use them. They get him the ball. You know, they a lot of different ways. They'll they'll hand it to him. They'll pitch it to him. They'll they'll throw it to him. And he's able to, to get down the field and, and stretch you. So, you know, we we've got a lot of talented receivers in this league. You know, you don't have to you turn the TV on and watch some of these games. Um, there's some really good players in our league, and he certainly is one of them. And, uh, you know, he garners your attention for sure. We, we're going to have to do a good job of covering him. Losing Elijah, obviously, Torrey is going to step into a role. Uh, his brother obviously played for Boise State. Uh, what have you seen, I guess, out of him? What, what did you see in him in the recruiting process? Because it's not a guy who had a lot of offers. What made yeah. you this guy can do it at this level? Yeah, Torrey is really um, – um, He's long, first of all. You know, we, we love long, rangy receivers. And, you know, I kind of – I've said before, I kind of want our receivers to look like a basketball team, you know, and, and uh, because if you have a number of guys like that, it's very difficult for people uh, to win their matchups against you. Um, but first of all, he's long. He's got a real quick step. And uh, he's able to uh, get down the field and, and, and stretch the defense. You know, he's been a – He's been a really, you know, important player for us uh, the last uh, year and a half since he's been here. You know, and when Cookie went down last year, he really stepped up and played big for us. He, he can give you a big play. You know, he's done that already earlier in the year against Cal, uh, a couple big plays. And so just a smart player, really loves to practice, uh, really handles himself maturely. And we saw that of him in high school as well. And you know, he's out of Fresno. They play really good brand of high school football there. And uh, he comes from a family of players, like you mentioned. And so he's going to have to step up and be an important player for us. And, and not only him, but Lockhart and, and Harry Ballard and the rest of our receivers. You know, we have, we have good players there. We have guys that have played. And, uh, you know, it's going to have to be a group effort uh, with everybody stepping up in, in Cookie's absence. Coach, is there any benefit to having played on the blue turf already recently with a good majority of this team and winning out there? Or is that just, you know, that was last year, we don't look at that? Yeah, no, I, every experience is important. You know, we've actually played there quite a bit, probably more than normal. Um, in four years, we played there three times, you know, with the two bowl games and, and then obviously playing Boise. So we're familiar with the atmosphere. We're familiar with the locker room. Um, you know, I'm glad we're playing them early in the season. Uh, you know, should be good weather. We're playing them in daytime, which is also another plus. So, so we're excited about getting an opportunity to go back up there and play. Should be a great crowd, um, and uh, it'll be a great challenge. And you know, this is a we play a, we play a really great schedule this year. I mean, there's a, there's challenges week to week, and um, you know, you got to be ready to step up to those challenges. But we're really we're really excited to see how we can play. And, and I think that's probably the thing that I'm most excited, you know, with the different things that have happened to us already this this fall, if we can we can kind of heal up, 
and go play uh, some of our best football now going into the conference against a real good opponent. So those are those are our challenges. And and like I mentioned earlier, you know, the best teams get better week to week and learn learn from things they need to improve on. And we've got a real mindful, conscientious group of seniors and guys that have played a lot. And, uh, and they're really anxious to see us play at the level that we could play as a team. So I think that that is really uh, what we're most looking forward to. I was, I was wondering, last week you brought up the, the history of the series and, and, and how sometimes that can get a little annoying from your perspective. But I was wondering, <laughs> your players are like 19 and 20 years old, and, you know? Yeah. They don't necessarily care what the result was in 1987 or whatever. Is that... I was going to ask you just the youth of the, of the players and the short history. Is that you know? Is well, that an you're, advantage? you're really right, and and sometimes uh, we have to remind them about the history. And uh, to me, I, I to me, it's what co- it, it's what makes college football is is the tradition and the history and and the former games that you've had. And obviously, Nevada and Boise have had had some great games, and. Um, and it's it's great interest to the fan base, and and I think that adds to the game. And but but sometimes the players have haven't experienced that, or we're we're too young to remember a lot of those games. And so we kind of talk about it. We 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 certainly don't dwell on it, but we talk about the you know how much these games mean to our fans and our fan base and our former players. And so we obviously want to go up there and play well. We want to represent. Nevada and and the history of Nevada in the right way and and that's playing a certain style of football that's playing physical and and aggressive and and as a team and um, and so it is important and we've talked about it we reminded them you know it's it's interesting uh, today I I showed the kids I started the meeting off by showing them uh, uh, the field goal that Justin Tuck hit yesterday the the 66 yarder and you know, and I just told him, I said, how do you do something that's never been done before? You know, and, and, and you really do it with your commitment, your commitment to work hard, the commitment to your skill. And when opportunities arise, you get an opportunity to do th- things that have not been done. And so um, we talk about that history. It's very important to us to, to go up there and, 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 and represent Nevada the right way. And, um, you know, and, and, uh, we have been up there and we have played in that environment, you know, recently and, and had success. So I think that should, that should help us in, in, on our way up there. Coach, I want to rewind for a second. Uh, just how beneficial has the extra week of rest and practice been for your team going in, going into a game against Boise state? No, it's, I think it's, it came at a great time and, and, you know, obviously at the beginning of the season, we didn't know that we were going to have three weeks of bad air quality and we were going to have to travel as much as we did. But I just think it was it was a good break for us. Um, um, we needed it. You know, we've had three physical games and, uh, you know, we were a little beat up and sore. And it just gave us a chance to kind of catch our breath and regroup. And uh, so I'm, I'm really glad we had this by when we had it. Um, I don't like playing five games in September. I know people do it, um, but I just don't like uh, – it seems like half your season's over with before the first month, and it just uh, – I would prefer to have a, a break right around now. And now we can kind of regroup, and, and now we're going to start getting in a groove and playing good football. And so really looking forward to that. I think we, we utilize the week smart. Um, you know, we, we, we worked on things we needed to work on. We also gave our kids a weekend to get fresh and we had a great practice today. And so, um, you know, I, I, I'm glad it happened when it did. And now that we're going into conference play, we kind of got a course that we're set on and we're ready to get started. You mentioned a little earlier, the early kickoff. Do you have a preference stat and and what kind of changes do you guys make when you start the game a little bit earlier in the day? Well, uh, really, we just want to start fast, Chris. You know, we, we do practice in the morning, and we're kind of used to getting up and getting going. And, uh, you know, when, we, when you play at 730 at night, you kind of have to pump the brakes a little bit and, and, and ease into the day and not, you know, not get started too quickly. But, uh, 
you know, we'll, we'll get up and, and uh, we'll have some meetings and have pregame and we'll go play the game, which is, which is, I wish every Saturday was like that, to be honest with you. Um, but I'm really happy. I'm happy that it's a, it's an early kickoff and we get to play right after lunch and, and we'll get home at a decent time as well and, and uh, get to play in the sunshine. I think that's a, that's a lot of fun in, in the fall, when, especially when you don't get to do it very often. Uh, with Tyson being out, what do you lose from him? He's been one of your better defenders over. Yeah, just his experience. Uh, you know, Tyson's really a physical player, and you know he really uh, sacrifices uh, with, for his teammates the way he plays. And you know, we're going to miss Tyson's experience and leadership. But you know, fortunately, uh, Jordan Lee's done a really good job for us. We have a lot of confidence in Jordan. He's also experienced. Um, and you know him along with Jojo Claiborne back there, those guys uh, they'll play good solid defense for us and get us lined up. And so, um, but we will miss Tyson. You know we we should get him back. Uh, he had a, a knee strain and and uh, hopefully in the next about three four weeks we'll be able to get him back on the field. Do you have a timeline for Andrew Cannon at this point, or is he still? You know Andrew is 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 still a week or so away. And um, we're going to start working him into practice, but he's not quite ready for prime time yet. And uh, but we're also hopeful we're going to get him back for the bulk of the Mountain West schedule. Obviously, learn a little bit about your team every time you got to take the field as a group. What, what do you feel like you've learned so far in that first one third of the season? You know, I, I think uh, you know we still have progress to make. I think we can play much better in the penal in the penalty department. Um, and just cleaning up some things, more focus, uh, better fundamentals. Um, the other thing I think, uh, you know, we want to generate more turnovers defensively, and I think that comes from disruptions. And whether it's guys beating their man up front uh, and making the quarterback have to throw over them, challenging receivers more, uh, hitting our blitzes, just, just kind of fine-tuning the things that we've been working on and, uh, and to get more production. And so, you know, I think that's one of the things that we've learned. I think we, I think we know, uh, you know, we can execute at a high level in the passing game um, with Carson and our receivers. And uh, we, we'd like to get more production there as well. And, and, uh, and then really, really challenged our special teams. I, I challenged them this morning, uh, you know, that we get more production. We have more guys step up and we have more guys that, that really can impact the football game. And, and uh, you know, we, we take a lot of pride in, in playing well in all fa three phases. And, uh, you, know, it's time, you know, it's time for these units to step up and really play at the level we're capable of. And I think that's the challenge this week. Do you have a couple keys to getting off to fast starts? Like you mentioned against Cowan and Kansas State, you know, maybe not as we, sharp as you want. We, we openly talk about it. And, and really, you know, and I talk to the coaches all the time about this, you know, we, we want our kids to play free and to play aggressive. And, you know, sometimes you feel like you need certain schemes for a game. But if, if a kid is overthinking and he's really not playing fast, we probably should leave some of those schemes on the shelf. And, and so we've worked really hard on that in all three phases to start fast. Um, you know, we didn't really start fast against Kansas State. Um, and so we're really, uh, we've had two weeks to work on the things we wanted to work on. And we, we really are looking to get off to a good start uh, in Boise. And so, um, but, but just playing, playing free and easy, having a lot of confidence in the schemes that we're, we're trying to get up early and, and letting the kids attack. And, and I think that's where we are as a team. We want to we wanna start getting in the attack mode and, and be aggressive in everything we do. Is this a game you'd like to see played every year? I mean, given the you guys are in different divisions, you get that opportunity, and you guys basically played each other every year for 40 straight years. It's kind of weird that when you're in the Mountain West together, that's not an opportunity you guys get. Yeah, I I would always love to play the top teams in our league, to be honest, and especially when when you know the game has history like like this one does between the two schools. I I, I would like to play them every year and. You know, and I know that's not really possible with the way the conference is set up. But, but if you're asking me, I would absolutely uh, like to play them every year. 
Coach, is it kind of a unique situation because you do have Vital on your coaching staff and he was part of that 2010 team just to help your guys understand some of the history since, you know, it, it does go back so long and it's, it's been so long really since um, you guys have got that win against them. Yeah. I mean, our kids were pretty young back then in 2010 and, and um, um, so, yeah, we've, we've shown them the videos and, and they, they understand the history of that game and, and what it meant to this school in, in, um, you know, so we've talked openly about it in the preseason and, uh, you know, Vi shared those stories with them, you know, and, and the way that team played and how that team never get, gave up and, and you have to play good teams for four quarters. I think that's the other, I think that's the other great lesson from that, that 2010 game is that, you know, you have to continue to play and, and you have to finish and, and, and finishing in the fourth quarter and in that game overtime was the difference in the game. And so, yeah, Vi's, Vi's an important uh, historian on our staff. We, we lean on him a lot for, for those old stories. And, you know, and the other thing, uh, you know, our Wolfpack walks have been amazing. Uh, we've, we've had so many former players talk uh, to our team every Friday about the history and, you know, different games and, and, and playing against these, these opponents. And, and so, um, that helps our players be familiar about Nevada football history. And uh, so, so important. And, and uh, we want to connect this team with the past. And, and then we want to represent it in the future as well.